Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the 2025 initiative Capricorn Solar Festival and Solstice Festival webinar. My name is Alexander and I welcome you on the behalf of the 2025 initiative coordination group. And as we come together, joining from different parts of the world, let's visualize ourselves joining in a circle on the mountain top. And we can briefly look through the list of the names of the participants and extend the energy of light and love joining with heart to heart to each other through space, using the power of creative imagination. And we project the radiance of our individual hearts towards the group heart center. The group heart. And we see as the flame of the group heart expands with the radiance of our hearts. And we see as the flame raises up linking with the fire love of the hierarchy in the heart center of the hierarchy the place that the christ holds And we visualize as the radiance of his heart expands, encompassing the entire humanity within the orb of its radiance. And we align with the energy of Capricorn as sun passes from sign of Sagittarius to Capricorn.
And as we stand together in our circle, we sound the mantra of the new group of world servers. May the power of the one life pour through the group of all true servers. May the love of the one soul characterize the lives of all who seek to aid the great ones. May I fulfill my part in the one work through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, and right speech. Welcome to the Capricorn Solar Festival. Today we bring our collective focus to the seed group of workers in the field of religion. And our special guests today, Helena and Sheldon Hughes. And uh, I welcome you, Helena, Sheldon. Please uh, unmute yourself. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's a very special yes. moment of the year, and I'm really happy and joyful that you will bring our focus to the topic of the new world religion. So the floor is yours, and I will make you a presenter, Helena, so that you could share your screen. OK, very good, yeah. Well, thank you, Alex, and the entire wonderful organizing committee. Um, and I'll just go from the top as I see you all, um, Claire and Daniela, and of course, Alex and Katya. So this is indeed a special day, this being the topic of the New World Religions, the sixth seed group on winter solstice day which is such a beautiful powerful symbol that the two together because and we will say more about this later as the solstices and the full moons and new moons are planetary festivals and are intrinsically part of the new world religion process so it's just been um a wonderful experience to presenting this this energy stream on behalf of um, the future of humanity so the way we're going to do this both sheldon and i are going to be making a presentation so um in just a moment i will turn it over to sheldon and then um when he is complete then i will take up what I want to present, and then we'll go perhaps back and forth a little bit, and then we'll open it up to the group. And then we'll close with a meditation, a group meditation that will um, be primarily focused on the winter solstice for today. Okay, so very good. So, Sheldon, um, and if there's um, a little bit of a, a knocking noise, so I don't know what that is. But, um, Maybe I'm working on this, and that could be okay. I'll meet myself in the meantime. Okay, so we are on each on our own computer. Those of you who know anything about us know that um, I am the weak link when it comes to these machines. So I have several things on the screen, but I think I can see what I'm supposed to do. But I'm thinking about that sound you heard. It could have been me just clicking. Yes. All right. All right. Well, welcome, friends. And um, 
Alexander, as you were moving us from these energies, this light of Sagittarius still with us for a little while, this great beam of light shining the way or illumining the way to a greater light ahead, and we move into this light of initiation. You know, we are preparing ourselves, I think, to step into something that, that does something more than just illumine the mind. There is something about this light of initiation which has a lifting, rising quality to it as we enter into it. So what a great day to, to work with this on. I'm just going to introduce a few thoughts about this and let Lena pick it up from, from here. Um, the, where I want to begin is why do we even talk about religion today? <laughs> And it may be obvious to, to some, and, and uh, to others it's like a ridiculous topic, but I think most of us on here would say this is essential. And just to remind us that um, um, religion basically is, has always been about linking us in relationship to our divine source. A reminder of that is what has been the focus, I think, about religions over the year, over the centuries, hundreds of thousands of years, expressed in various symbols and, and teachings. Today, it seems to me that it's, it's so important, given the, how would I say, the movement now into Aquarius um, and its effects on the older structures of Pisces, the threat and the the attack going on, by the way, is obvious what we see in politics and other places to kind of hold out of the past or move back into it and not move into the future. So it's important, I think, that we really see now what um, um, C to C group and it's, 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 it's high relevance at this point in our, in our emergence. Uh, Actually, I, by the way, major religion, but uh, so I've always enjoyed this this arena. But what it does is it, it it gives us it reminds us of what we truly are in our divine nature. You know, and that gets expressed in various ways. You know, we could say we're sons and daughters. You know, made in the image and likeness of God would be one way that that gets put in more religious language. Or more contemporary thinkers were fractals, a great hologram. Uh, DK talks about some of the names that were given uh, of our divine nature, um, divine beings of light, love, and intelligent will, um, or lords of sacrifice, and ceaseless persevering devotion. Now, those are just words, but as we think about those words, it brings us into touch, I think, or at least a touch of a touch of what we essentially are. Now, <clears throat> we know we have come a long time ago here to this planet to, to do something, to serve. And we've had to, um, you might say, evolve bodies which will allow us to function at different vibratory levels of matter. And we're now working our way back up through those, those levels. But for now, we think about the question then, who are we, you know? Uh, um, uh, one of the best things I know of, just as a reminder, is, is that great affirmation of the disciple. You know, we're points of light within a great light. We are green strands of loving energy within the stream of love divine. We are points, I've often thought about sparks of sacrificial fire, focused within the fiery will of God. And that's where we stand, that understanding of who we really who we are on more of a soul nature as we come down from the highest nature. And so what are we here to do? You know, kind of the last question that gets up, gets asked in terms of religion. And again, that affirmation has some beautiful ways of putting it. When we think about, you know, second to last paragraph in there says something about, we are ways by which people, men and women, humanity can achieve. What we do with our own lives, how we live our lives, they, they become a way forward for many who, who know us and we work with in various ways. Another phrase here that's, we are beams of light shining upon their way. 
allowing this higher light to come through us and in, in light away through the darkness that we're temporarily facing. And as a result, we are sources of strength, enabling people to stand. So this is this is um, essentially, I think, what what religion is going to be trying to reach us with in new modes of expression, and and trying to be look, looking at some examples as we go through the rest of this uh, presentation. Okay, now. I'm playing with my computer here or something. So let's see. All right. No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> moment of silence there. Well, anyway. <clears throat> um, D.K. tells us that the workers in the field of religion form this particular sixth C group. Their work is to formulate the universal platform of the new world religion. <clears throat> it is, or this will be a work of loving synthesis. It will emphasize the unity and fellowship of the spirit. This group is in a pronounced sense <clears throat> channeled for the activity of the second ray of love wisdom, that of the world teacher today, an office held at present by the Christ. And the platform of the new world religion will be built by the, by the many groups working under the inspiration of the Christ and the influence of the second ray. <clears throat> and these in their totality will constitute this sixth seed group. I thought it was important to read this because we think about religion a lot with a small or medium sized R as being a sixth ray expression, which it has been through the Piscean age. What we're told here, of course, is this is going to be modeled, built upon the Christ as he is today. I'll say a bit more about that <clears throat> in a couple of minutes, but um, but it's really a second ray presentation now that's needed in the world, which is inclusive and <clears throat> expressed through intelligence, love, and will. Okay. He says, you know, these groups were formed back in the uh, late 30s, early 40s. And he says they were formed as C groups, not so much for, for the for a learning of, of the people who were doing it, <clears throat> but um, for the integration of the world of souls with the world of everyday humanity. And so he talks about these activities of those of us in the world of souls totally working. This is a way by which the human kingdom can become a great station of light and a powerhouse of spiritual force, distributing it to the other kingdoms of nature. That's our role as the fourth kingdom. We basically are <clears throat> solar angel to the lower kingdoms. So he says <clears throat> some things about this, the new world religion, just to say some things I think most of us have read. But um, <clears throat> he says on the fact of God and of our relationship to God or to the divine, on the fact of immortality, which is we are immortal, eternal beings, quite beyond any deaths that we see in the physical body. <clears throat> and in the continuity of divine revelation and the constant emergence of messengers from the divine center, this new world religion will be based. He says to these facts will be added man's assured instinctive knowledge of the existence of the path to God, they write down many paths to God, and, and, and of our ability to tread that path when the evolutionary process has brought, has brought us 
to the point of a fresh orientation to divinity and to the acceptance of the fact of God transcendent, yes, and particularly of God imminent within every form of life. It says the keynote will be the divine approach echoed by the Christ, <coughs> said by James in the New Testament, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. And this is the injunction emanating in new and clear tones from the Christ and the spiritual hierarchy as they are today. Okay, I could say a bit more about this. I think the more things will come up. I would just mention the fact that in passing, DK writes about the festivals that we are working with, as a matter of fact, for the most part, the three, the three major festivals, <clears throat> Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and the nine festivals that follow will be eventually um, observed by people from all over the world. They're, they're going to form uh, part of how we gather together in the is as a new as a new world religion expresses itself. I want to say just a couple of words about <clears throat> why or not only why this is important, but but how how it's also coming to the fore so quickly. Um, and this has to do with the Christ as he is today. Now, DK, who most of us have read probably several times, many times, writes, I would remind you that I, Master DK, write as one who believes in the great spiritual reality and who regards the unfolding spirit of man as the unshatterable evidence of the existence of the one in whom we live and move and have our being. I speak as one who believes in and loves the Christ and who knows him to be the master of all masters and the teacher alike of angels and of men. I am one who looks to him as the supreme expression of divinity upon earth and who knows the extent of his sacrificial work for humanity, the wonder of the revelation which he brought, the imminence of his return, and of his coming assumption of spiritual rule in the hearts of men and women everywhere. So that's somebody writing who's <clears throat> recently, the last several hundred years, been coming through the Buddhist tradition, but this is where he, how he regards the Christ. So I'm just going to say two things. One is that something's happened to him. Um, uh, when? Good question. But something... There, there's been over the over the centuries, but recently, an approach to the Christ and by him toward the divine will. So he is now able to be not only light and love, but also his own second wave form of spiritual will. And that has brought him very close to Shambhala. He's already a member of the Shambhala, you know. The center where the will of God is known, but very close to Sanat Kumara. <clears throat> and so he's the first, as we know, of, of Earth humanity, people who began, started here, came here and started here, not from the moon chain or from some other planet to help us. The first of our humanity to reach this particular state, state of being, and therefore through him, we are able to um, resonate with what's coming through and from him. That's why he becomes such a such a central figure. And it says, under the divine will, when he said yes a long time ago, a couple thousand years ago, but even more recently now, to to um, reappear in visible presence, that's said in 1945. He had to preside over the materialization of the kingdom of God and reinstitute the mysteries of initiation in such a form that they would prove the basis of the new world religion. Above all, he had to reveal the nature of the will of God. And this, then the will is interpreted in terms of the hierarchical plan and the effort of each person becomes that of, that of you know, he says, negating, but overcoming his original self-will and seeking then to merge his will with that of the group and the group itself, an aspect of hierarchical effort. 
sphere of his activity will be known to be the human heart and also the crowded marketplaces of the world. And the task of disciples is to develop the mind that is in Christ. <clears throat> and as they do, they will help make clear the way for the coming of his feet, as the Bible puts it. Seeing life and events in the light of the spiritual values, as does the Christ, will facilitate the giving out of the new teaching, will provide the skeleton structure of the new world religion, thus giving us a fresh view of divine intention and a living insight into the minds of those who implement the day of the divine will and are the engineers of humanity's future. So that's all I think I want to say now, Helene, about opening remarks, about where we are and uh, the role, particularly of the Christ, and that this is the secret. I turn it back to you. I hope. Okay, thank you, Sheldon. So as we look ahead into the world of tomorrow and begin to question what structure the faith of humanity should assume, and what building the skill of the knowers will erect to house the religious spirit of man. Three more fundamental truths appear to be emerging as necessary adjuncts to the revealed body of truth. So above what she did not go into in great detail, which is just fine, but these are this is part of the body of knowledge that we have currently have, the, the fact of God, God transcendent, <clears throat> man's relationship to the divine, which is God imminent, the fact of immortality, which really deals with the whole subject of the continuity of life existing beyond death, and this gets into the entire subject of reincarnation, and this is one of the teachings that Christ will bring when he does appear. The brotherhood of man, God in expression. Interesting way to think about humanity, that this is God in expression through the brotherhood of man. The existence of the way to God, it is built in and wired in that there is a return from well, whence we came, we came from the monad, the spirit, the God self, through all these different fabrications of the universe. And in that descent, a deep dive into matter, we have left a trail and there is a return. And it's made easier and simpler for us through the messengers that have come before us. They point the way. And the historicity of the two great approaches and a possibility of a third and imminent approach. And this, this deals with um, the coming of the solar angels and the spiritual hierarchy. Uh, two minor approaches that are the, the coming of the Buddha and then the Christ. So, <clears throat> adding to this, the next revealed body of truth. And in part of the body of truth, I want to read a verse from Agni Yoga that I, I just absolutely love. Tomorrow's flowers bloom from yesterday's seeds. Advanced minds do not refuse to eat yesterday's bread. One learns to combine the best knowledge of the past and of the present day while striving toward the future. If bound to only one point of view, the best advantages are lost. When the language of ancient parables and metaphor combine with current day teachings, the seed as well as the fruit will exalt the learner and the teachings. And so this is a profoundly beautiful way to state that when the Christ and spiritual hierarchy come finally appearing on the earth, they're not going to just start from scratch. It's not the way things work. They will build upon the best of the past, take the best that we have through our, our history, 
and discard that which does no longer serve and move. So the three points to build upon will be the demonstrated existence of a spiritual hierarchy, the life purpose of which is the good of humanity. The members of the hierarchy are seen to be the custodians of the divine plan and the expression of the love of God. And this is how we often hear the spiritual hierarchy that <clears throat> this kingdom of souls is a center in a body of God that expresses the love of God. <clears throat> Secondly, the development of a science of invocation and evocation as a means and method of approach to divinity. This will grow out of the ancient habits of prayer and the practice of meditation as developed by the mystics and esotericists. And D.K. goes on to say that prayer and meditation are the, were the preliminary steps to this emerging science and that we really shouldn't shy away from the idea of science, that in the, the scientific method of approaching God, we will actually make a firmer, deeper, quicker access to these divine energies. So worship in the churches is really these <clears throat> preliminary ways of connecting with the spiritual hierarchy. And I find that a beautiful um, reframe for, for all of us. The form that the religion of the New Age will take will be built around the periods of the full moon, wherein certain great approaches will be made to the world of reality. <clears throat> and we already see this very much in place and active well, through the esotericism of the world. And this is an indication to that. As the wheel, great wheel turns, we come to the third point <clears throat> from which I want to build in today's presentation, that the realization that the starry heavens, the solar system, and the planetary spheres are all of them the great manifestations of great spiritual lives, and that the interrelation between these embodied lives is as real and effectual as is the relation between members of the human family. And when I read this quote first, I, I never tire of reading it, I was just taken into, um, I was stunned to think that these great constellations and beings are really part of a living universe, that the quantum sciences are discovering the living <clears throat> nature of the universe. And I love the phrase that I use, and I always have to explain it, is that we live in an entified universe, that th this universe is a, it's a being. It has a psyche. It has living processes. And it is entified in that it is comprised of countless numbers of lives, of devic or angelic lives, macro to micro, micro to macro, trillions upon trillions upon countless lives. The, the chair that we're sitting on, the computer screen we're looking at, is made up of devic lives. And this is why we can communicate with the universe in this way. So when I think of the, these great beings um, in front of us, um, you consider, for example, the Pleiades, um, and they're <clears throat> referred to as seven sisters. And in a really esoteric little spot I found, they're also referred to as the seven doves. And then there's the great bear, and they're referred to as the seven Rishis, and they are referred to as consorts of the Pleiades. So we can imagine that these beings are having conversations. And in the great polarity of the two, the, the Pleiades as a whole and the, the great bear as a whole is having conversations. And then you break it down into their parts and th these major seven stars of each of these great constellations are having conversations. It begins to bring home this idea that we live in an entified universe. 
So here we have the constellations that, again, we need to look at as, as enormous consciousnesses that are having relationships with each other. And when we put them into relationship around the zodiac of our <clears throat> sun, we tend to need to look at them in their polarities. So in esoteric astrology, we learn that Capricorn and Cancer are in constant communication. They are one sign, really. Uh, Sagittarius and Gemini are one sign, really. So these are really we only have these six signs. And when they're unified in us in that way, we make great strides in our own development. The ancient wisdom teaches that space is an entity and the entire vault of heaven is the phenomenal appearance of that entity. It is with the life of this entity and with the forces and energies, the impulses and the rhythms, the cycles and the times and seasons that esoteric astrology deals. And esoteric astrology for us is the science and study of the soul. The soul at multi levels of being, the soul of the universe, the soul of a solar system, the soul of a planet, the soul of a group, and the soul of you and I. Recently, we were in New York. Two weeks ago, we went into the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. And if you've never been there, make it a sojourn. Um, it is um, a cathedral that is two blocks long, and it is stunning when you walk into it. And um, I'd love to say more, but what I do there this time through this little postcard that I found in the gift shop is the woman in the sun from the book of Revelation, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. And in Christian symbolism, this image is often associated with the Virgin Mary and the triumph of good over the forces of evil. And notice that there are 12 stars around her head that I believe are related to the 12 constellations and 33 flames around her body, which has esoteric significance. So here again is another example that we live in Entified Universe. And of course, bringing us a little closer to home is this idea of the substance aspect of the Virgin Mary. And in this symbol, we see the sanctification of matter to house the spirit, which is the entire process of Virgo through the signs, readying the being that we are to take birth. It is said that we become the Virgin Mary for ourselves. The light of love which flows from the heart of God, from the heart of the sun, and said elsewhere, the sun of divine love, again, here's this entified universe that we live in, where we realize we are threefold light, a triangle composed of the light of the spiritual triad, of a light which is streaming from the heart of the sun, and a steadily burning light which glows from the cosmic physical plane. These three put together create a light body in us at a very high level. And the above phrasing can only be truly understood when we grasp that light is substance and that substance is energy. Then will revelation come perceiving what has always been there. 
In the New Testament, there is depicted for us the life of the Son of God in full manifestation, wherein, freed from every veil of lower substance, the soul in its true nature walks the earth. It becomes apparent to us as we study the life of Christ what it means to develop the powers of the soul to attain liberation and become in full glory a God walking on earth. And this is what it is all about. So when we say, let the mind which was in Christ also be manifest in me, in us, this is an advancing stage of realization of who we really are and becoming in and through form. So the entire theme zodiac can be approached from the angle of light and its unfolding and increasing radiance and the gradual demonstration in what decay has called elsewhere the glory of the one. The mode of the development of this inner light and of its externalization must remain, from the standpoint of cosmic effects, one of the secrets of initiation, and this for a long time to come. It will, however, not be out of place if I were to give symbolically certain phrases and sentences which will indicate for each sign this growth of light and light, as it is esoterically called, bearing in mind that we are attempting to express conditions connected with the soul whose essential nature is light. And this DK does for us in the keywords of the soul and the keyword phrases of every constellation. This soul light <clears throat> affects the form as evolution proceeds and produces sequentially the revelation of that form and of the nature of space-time, as well as of the goal. And so he gives us a huge hint here, saying that a study of the above thoughts will reveal the symbolic story of the irradiation of matter, of the growth of the light body within the macrocosm and microcosm, that's us, and finally make clear of the logos. And this is worth contemplating. But the point that I want to bring home here is that the great zodiacal being who ensouls all 12 constellations is one life energy, 12 faceted in nature, as a direct reflection within us, within the light in the head, the heart in the head of the 12 petaled lotus. So as we go around the zodiac in a conscious way, not unconscious, but in a conscious way, invoking these energies, meditating on the keywords of the soul, making contact, conscious contact, perhaps angelic contact with each one of the petals or energies in the head, we are replicating this great macrocosmic glory body that is being reflected in our own. So one more word about or thought about the teachings coming through the New World religion. DK says in the reappearance of the Christ that today, <clears throat> everywhere, people are ready for the light. They are expectant of a new revelation and of a new dispensation. And humanity has advanced so far on the way of evolution that these demands and expectations are not couched in terms of material betterment only, but in terms of spiritual vision, true values, and human relations. They are demanding teaching and spiritual help. And it's very interesting to consider that the one of the terms or definitions of religion is relationship. I'm reading now from the reappearance of the Christ, and he says that the new world religion began to take form when Christ came 2,000 years ago, inaugurating a new era, and it began to take form on the inner spiritual planes 
And he says that the word religion concerns relationship and is the era of right human relations and of a right relation to the kingdom of God or the kingdom of souls. So as we come into relationship with our own inner divinity and relationship with the soul of the kingdom of God, we are practicing what is meant by true spirituality or religion. Before I get into this next slide, I want to um, just bring to the attention the idea of spirituality versus religion. And there are so many people today who are saying, I want nothing to do with religion. I would rather call it spirituality. And understandably, um, <clears throat> given, oh, let's say the... Um, the misuse of religion over the centuries, why people would say that. I, I too, and I, I would imagine that every one of us um, in this presentation today, listening to this, has gone through their own version of this. And yet I'm, I'm also extremely aware of the hero's and heroine's journey that we all need to leave at some point our, our cultural conditioning our families, our society, our religious upbringing, and we go on our journey, our heroine's journey, our hero's journey, and find out for ourselves what is true, real for us. And then we come back and we pick up with a religion that is right for us, and we recreate we, we it from within ourselves. And I have to say that um, I was one of those that left. I was raised in the Catholic tradition. And it didn't do that much harm for me, as I have heard others having been truly harmed through religion. But I did find that it just was not taking me far enough except for the sacraments, which I saw as an alchemical mass. And great things were happening in that alchemy. For me, I discovered that <clears throat> the difference between spirituality and religion is is that spirituality is this great standing in the energies of the things we just talked about the energies of, of the constellations the energies of the centers the energies of right within our own body but religion is those deep spiritual practices for daily living and it's it is the relegare it is the coming back to the wholeness of who we are to ourselves and so we discover what those religious practices are, and they evolve and they change. But I cannot imagine a life without practicing religion um, in daily living. And I think we need to also be aware that the dark forces struck a blow against humanity when, DK says this, when people interpreted spirituality as coming only through the arena of religion because that created huge separation in the psyche of humanity that they're only spiritual at a time of religious practice or on Sundays um, during worship or meditation and then the rest of the time in the world of business or politics or education or or whatever we do out there is separate it's separate from a true spirituality and yet the definition of spirituality a true spirituality is anything that brings us forward in our life anything that expands the consciousness and so by bringing spirituality true spirituality back into all the departments of human living and this is a wonderful expression through the seed groups we take back the light within humanity we take it back from the forces of, of evil so who is the christ today i want to read this and put this into the field of our thinking today christ is the world healer and savior he works because he is the embodied soul of all reality a stunning phrase to think about he works today as he worked in Palestine 2,000 years ago through groups. There he worked through the three beloved disciples, through the 12 apostles, 
through the chosen 70 and the interested 500. Now he works through his masters and their groups, we could say their ashrams, their centers of light and power, and thereby greatly intensifies his efforts. He can and will work through all groups just in so far as they fit themselves for planned service, for the distribution of love, and come into conscious alignment with the great potency of the inner groups. And once again, when I read this and keep reading this, it is a pathway forward for all of us that are working in groups today. And a beautiful quote from DK. May he whom we all love and serve, the master of all masters, and undying friend of mankind, shed his light upon your way and evoke your trust, your understanding, and your help in his task of leading humanity into the light of a new day. And it is here now that I would like to bring up the idea of esoteric advent. That phrase actually exists in, in the books, and I was trying to find it, and it didn't come up on my search, but I know I saw it. <laughs> um, I believe that we are today inside of a great esoteric advent, and there are a number of ways to understand the term esoteric. Um, esoteric could mean for us that which is not commonly known or hidden. It also often refers to the soul. And in this case, it refers to the coming of the soul. And so what is the esoteric advent? It is the coming of the soul in humanity. And it is the coming of the Christ and spiritual hierarchy or kingdom of souls approaching humanity and humanity approaching the kingdom of souls where that the destiny is that the two become one. So as every human being awakens to his soul, we become a, a conscious part of the kingdom of souls and make progress for the whole soul of humanity to be merging with the kingdom of souls. So what I want to say now then is a number of years ago, um, I would say it became a kind of very powerful impress during a meditation to offer the esoteric community. This was um, right before Christmas and we were entering an Advent period for uh, Christmas Advent in the traditional understanding of it. And I was very strongly impressed to offer a, a process for the esoteric community to come together and think through certain high-powered living thoughts on a daily basis and do meditations together on a daily basis and bring the sanctity of the Christmas period back to what would bring a smile on the heart of the Christ, its simplicity, its beauty, rather than the materialism that it had um, denigrated to, which is um, good for trade and profits and buying uh, presents and without the real understanding of what these presents really symbolically stood for. And I was <clears throat> very surprised by what happened through that um, gathering of souls, uh, I would say within uh, a week, 80 people signed up and um, and we went through a process together and it was it was stunning, um, the depth of it, the power of it and the unfoldment of the inner nature of, of the group soul that had evolved from that three weeks together and then we did 12 days of Christmas. <clears throat> and since then, um, it has continued to evolve and has become now a forum for one of the purifying streams of 
the new world religion. DK says that before the Christ can appear, there are a number of conditions that have to happen. And one of them is that uh, the major institutions in humanity have to clean house. One of those institutions are the churches. And the releasing of old dogmas and doctrines that are not bringing humanity forward. And so the question began to arise, what would a purifying stream in the Christian tradition look like? Look like? And this began to emerge through this process, which now has a formal name called Esoteric Advent. And um, it's been growing, and now there are some presentations occurring during the major um, Easter time and Pentecost. And, but the primary um, expression of it is the invocation and evocation of the planetary full moon times and the solstices and equinoxes and new moons. So um, that's all I want to say on this at, at the point at this point, except to say that it has also become an avenue for spreading the ageless wisdom teachings through a new forum. Um, DK had asked us that we spread the Ageless Wisdom teachings far and wide. And so what we have done is taken the juiciest parts of his teachings and put them into um, the seven-day full moon processes and the kind of process that we're a lot of us on this call are in right now, <clears throat> the esoteric advent process um, for Christmas. But it is in our minds, esoteric advent is not the Christmas advent only. It is the advent of the Christ. And this is simply a forum for this to come through more. So this is an example. Um, the teachings that humanity is crying for, wanting to be brought forward, that they're not getting through the churches. Um, teachings like Sirius. What is this star? What is this um, great energy that that ha that captures our imagination when we look up into the sky and the teachings tell us of course that it is the star of initiation and it is the the home of the the great lodge on sirius and it is intrinsic to discipleship and unfoldment of consciousness and, and taking initiation what what do mountains signify? What are these mountains of consciousness? What are these initiations? And I'm just asking these as questions for us to <clears throat> consider, not to answer. During this time of period, especially, when we see um, the, the stories is told in the Christian tradition of the wise men going to find um, the Christ in, in the cave. All of these allegories have deep esoteric meaning. And so the question arises, what was that star, as we saw here? What does it portend? Who are the wise men, really? Are they aspects of ourselves? And at what levels? Of realization are these wise men. Okay, so I think this is all that I want to say for now, and I open the the floor to um, group interaction. And I first want to invite um, our dear friend Alex Radcliffe, who has prepared uh, something to uh, to share with the group. Um, she has been um, just a very dear, wonderful colleague and um, soul that has participated actually in the esoteric advent process and has found it to be extremely um, beneficial to her. So I don't know what she's going to say, say but I'm sure <clears throat> we'll all love it. So Alex, if you're ready <laughs> to speak. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear, beautifully. Oh, good. Thank you. We're connected. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so wonderful to hear your passion for the New World religion, Helena. Um, and and thank you for for inviting me. My my job here is to is to relate a personal experience of the esoteric Advent practices as a manifestation of the New World religion in in cyberspace for us all. And 
I'd like to begin by saying that I was raised as a Catholic as well. As a child, I have very fond memories of memories of church on Sundays. I I wasn't um, adversely conditioned in any way. But what stands out in memory from those very early days is the Latin mass and the hymns and the powerful incense and the mysteries of the rit of the ritual. And we didn't know what any of it meant in our heads at the time, but it definitely registered something in our hearts and souls and awoke some little spark of remembrance. And um, and then as, as the years went by, the church changed, we all changed, and but it became more mundane and modern and bare. And um, for example, now living in the UK, thanks to Henry VIII, he seized all the magnificent Catholic churches and made them Protestant. And so Catholic churches had to be built anew and were all modern and concrete or wooden. And so we have to travel to France where you can absorb yourself in the transcendence of the stained glass windows and the glorious statues of the Holy Mother often draped in gold. And so they are still existing in other countries, but something, something was lost. And DK asked the question in, um, I think it's in um, Reappearance of the Christ, why are the churches empty? What's, what's going on? And he talks about the difference between churchianity and Christianity, the true teachings of, of the Christ. And uh, it, we can point to a, a lack of, of meaning or a loss of meaning or a loss of magic and definitely a lack of true spiritual experience. And this is uh, what he says, and we can see in modern times, is what people are seeking, spirituality rather than theology and religion. And especially, he says, the younger generation who seek verification of this deep-seated unvoiced recognition that they have. We all know somebody in our family or a friend or a neighbor who says, you know, I'm not religious, but I know there is something. And how will they know what that something is and where will they find it? And this is where the new world religion comes in. And in relation to uh, Esoteric Advent, the website which Helena and Sheldon have so lovingly created, I have said to her on several occasions that she's created a church in cyberspace which has now grown into a cathedral. It's full of prayers and mantras and magnificent images and invocations and reflections and especially the most selective music and fine music. And what I've been reading some people's comments on the forum as well, and they speak about the total immersion in this energy field and how this is created through sound. We all know the power of sound and uh, I think Helena in one of her meditations says, we enter now into sacred time and sacred space. And what I've said to Helena and Sheldon is how remarkable to have this, to have this opportunity, especially now with the state of the world, to drop everything and be immersed and saturate yourself in sacredness. And that is the effect of the New World Religion through this website and how much we need that 
and how much the world needs that. Because I know myself, when I've absorbed and saturated myself in the sacredness of the one self, you carry that fragrance with you out into your family and to the world. And this may well be the way we're going to, to transform the planet. Um, that softening that's needed, it's, it's remarkable how when you enter into sacred time and sacred space and through the practices of transferring the consciousness to the plane of the Christ, which is the point of the New World Religion, we then, um, as Selena often says, loosen those denser atoms of lower energy and reach a higher vibration. So those three points that the New World Religion are based on, the fact that the Spirit of God is both transcendent outside, which we were always taught, but also imminent within. And then the fact of the divine quality of the forces of nature and in man, we were never told this when we were children, that the starry heavens, the solar system and the planetary spheres are manifestations of great spiritual lives. I mean, I share that with young people now. And this is something everyone is keen to hear, I find. The tiny atom, man, is linked with the great central life of the solar system. And the fact that humanity is an expression of divinity. Now, I don't know how my life would have been different if I'd been told that when I was five years old in church on a Sunday. So my gratitude to these wonderful beings through whom this has come and their hard work to put it together for, for us is endless. It's created a way to draw closer to the Christ, not as a myth, but as an absolute reality and as a, an experience. The website isn't just a website, it's an experience. Um, Swami Vivekananda famously said, it's good to be born in a church, but it's not good to die in one. And he was referring naturally to the crystallized version of, of churchianity. Well, if religion in its truest sense means reconnecting and returning to the origin and reestablishing unity, then this energy field created through the knowledge and the practices of transforming the consciousness to the plane of the Christ, these practices of the New World Religion is, to me, a church that we can live in and we can thrive in and we can die in happily. So thank you. Alex, the divinity within me bonds <laughs> to the divinity within you. I could never have said what, how you expressed yourself just now. Absolutely um, beautiful and deep. So thank you. Well, thank you. And, and it's more experience as well, I have to say. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm. I hope people so will this is, nah, Yeah. Well, you know, we did say we did not, you know, I was even reticent to bring anything up about esoteric advent and a couple of people said, but you must, you must. And I realized that, yeah, um, how can I not having to talk on the new religion and the purifying streams and this is basically uh, my life now. I spend umpteen hours sometimes all night long putting up a new something ready to make ready for the next um, day or whatever it is we're into. So to have um, people like yourself experience it with such um, depth is it just, it's, uh, it's, it's everything. It's absolutely everything. 
So thank you, Alex. Is there anyone um, on any subject who wants to um, comment on the new group of world servers, on the new world religion, on what it means to you, how you see it unfolding, anything, anyone else like to offer their thoughts? We open. We have probably about 10 more minutes, do we? Um, because we want to leave the last 10 or 15 minutes for a meditation. And um, so we probably have about 10 minutes. So we invite people to share their impressions and uh, in the, into the circle. And so please function raising your hand. It's a button on your control panel to or you could um, just write your um, comments in the question section of your control panel. Uh, I just wrote confirming Alex's statement that esoteric advent is an experience. And you can see the link to the esoteric advent website uh, in the chat window. So I will unmute Katya. Katya, please unmute yourself. Uh, hello, and uh, thank you so very much. Um, I think you made the impossible. <laughs> you touched upon the vastness of those, you know, amazing things from meditate to meditate and ponder during this time. And um, I'm very grateful. And um, it's interesting to me that it brought to me the aspect, the difference between the experiences of the hard rays and the soft rays, so to speak. Um, the difference in the path of mystics and occultists and um, blending. And uh, it's interesting how people in groups work together, although working through a different experience, you know, and um, it's also a very interesting point you brought for me. And uh, the third thing is, I remember that at some point I felt that that religion slowly is becoming a tradition. Um, from the spirituality to religion to tradition out of it. And um, I was looking for the for the understanding how to explain how to explain the difference between, like, for, for my child, you know, for Sasha, between the religion and the tradition. And I said that, you know, it's uh, if we are in the religion of, you know, cleanliness, and that we love to clean, so if we clean it all, all the day long, and then somebody comes and starts messing around. So if we are in a tradition, we say, Oh, how could you? We we worked whole day to do that. And if we are in the religion, then uh, we just say, wow, <laughs> that's a great opportunity to clean again. <laughs> and uh, it was, she was laughing, you know, but I think she got at her like 10 year old, you know, with her 10 year old impression that, you know, there, if you are living something, then uh, it brings a very different note into your life. Rather than if you follow in the tradition, it will come with certain restrictions, and uh, they'll eventually you'll have to impose that on others. And uh, it's it you know I had a very interesting experience with her about that. The reminded me of that. Thank you very much. It, it's just so much to so much to listen again and again and again. Thank you. This is Sheldon Like this be a quick comment on what you were saying, Katya. For me, that you said it, that tradition can acquaint us with ideas, thoughts, practices, largely of the past, but what religion wants to be all about is living experience within us and without us of these energies that flow through with which we can cooperate, serve, and move forward. So it's the livingness aspect that, that, that makes it dynamic. So thanks you for your thought there. And add, it's the 
when it comes to ritual, ritual can be similarly experienced. If, if it's dead ritual, if it's something that just has outworn its usefulness, but living ritual, when you're bringing in the laws of the soul and the higher energies of the angels, for example, and the, the energies within our own um, <clears throat> heart and the head and, and all the centers, when we have practices that actually awaken these and stimulate these in, in a very gentle way when we're doing it with in concert with the solar angel, who is the great leader of all this, um, divine mathematician who knows exactly how much to apply, what kind of force, what kind of stimulus, when and where. The that is that is it, Katya. It, it's the livingness. It's it's not the dead world ritual. It's what are the rituals that are going to bring us onto new life and onto greater contacts than our own mundane world. So I'm with you on that. Hi, Judy, you unmuted. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I have been uh, participating in Esoteric Advent uh, for a few years now. And I just want to speak a little bit to the idea of the seed group. I think that uh, many of us have studied uh, DK's works and uh, are familiar with a number of different ideas uh, and want to serve in some way. And for quite a while before Esoteric Advent, I participated in full moon meditations. But it was really the uh, idea of being a group, having a regular practice, having the seven-day uh, full moon rituals, having them build one upon the other, that really supported the idea of being that bridge, to be that worker, so that uh, we could, in fact, help the Christ and the soul of uh, humanity blend with humanity itself. For me, this really was the idea of a seed group because it was in this forum that we could do the work that we've been reading about. So that, you know, is what I'd like to share. Perfectly said, thank you. Thank you, Judy. Good to hear your voice. Yeah, I, thank you also, Judy. And, and um, I'm looking at my notes here, and I have a little scribble here as I was putting down um, thoughts as they were dropping in, which, by the way, it was so interesting because it was back in Leo that I, time of Leo, I thought, what are we going to talk about during the New World Religion? It's such a, such a wide subject and so many layers to it. And I, all of a sudden, I started to get all these bullet points, and I forgot about this page, and then I put it away into a folder. And two, two days ago, uh, again, I, I got up very early in the morning and thought to myself, what, what are the main points that we want to bring up? And it was just amazing that I looked at these points that I put down on paper, and then I looked at what had come through meditatively um, six months ago and was nearly identical and one of the things that came out was that as um that religion must not be a theology but a living practice and where we then bring in the group approach to divinity and that's that's part of of the essence of the new world religion is group approach to divinity the deeper we enter the Aquarian age it's all about groups it's no longer about individuals uh, attaining divinity as we did in the Piscean age now it's these people are coming together and and so I made this little note yesterday that it's not a theology but a living practice and loosening and disturbing the atoms of lesser vibration and bringing in the higher atoms and it's you know this purifies our lower nature <clears throat> the substance aspect within ourselves to birth the Christ within ourselves to greater and greater levels of divinity through group approach and this little ladybug just a ladybug in winter she dropped on my paper <laughs> 
so I'm taking that as as a point of all the other points that I could be making right now in in, in summary. Um, I'm gonna end it on this one. <laughs> All right, I think we've come to that time. Have we, Alex, when we should probably uh, move into meditation now? Uh, yes, we have about nine minutes left, and uh, uh, we are very close to the exact time of the solstice. Are we? I thought the solstice was at 2.23 here, which would mean... Maybe five, I, I, it's, it's, I'm not insistent i'm just following the online program planet watch and it shows that sun's approaching approaching but maybe it's already there but yes let's well you connect. we are within the ethos you are absolutely right um and my um my notes say that it will be pacific time 223 and i think um the planetary time on the east coast there i'll give it to you exactly is going to yeah yeah, at um, New York will be 5 20, 23 p.m. So we're within the two hours. So we are in the energy period. Absolutely. <sighs> All right, friends. So the way I look at the winter solstice is that it is one of those tremendous planetary events uh, wherein a cardinal cross is formed through the cardinal signs and capricorn being a cardinal sign and one of the four points on this cardinal cross drawing in cardinal energies and unless we're esotericists you know we have to understand what that means and there's no time to to move into that but let us just say that it's it's pulling in energies from the star Sirius into our solar system and into um, our planet itself. And this is why we can say that this is a cosmic Christ mass. The Christ is appearing at many different levels of expression. The cosmic Christ is the Syrian Christ, Sirius. There's the Christ at the level of this solar system, and then there's the planetary Christ that we know about, and then there are the Christs walking the planes of Earth through through us at various levels of expression. Just quickly, um, solstice is Latin for stand still, and when the sun reaches the top or bottom of its travels, it seems to stand still before changing direction, hence the name. And this wonderful person tracked the movement of the sun. You can see how it does the zenith points during the summer solstice, which the, our wonderful friends in the South Pacific are experiencing right now. And we're experiencing, notice the winter solstice and how low in the sky and the horizon it reaches. And then when you're in the far north of Finland or Lapland, it just reaches the tip of the horizon and doesn't quite make it, but its rays shine onto the sky and you get what are called blue moments, the most beautiful color of sky that the sun is shining. These are such a magical time. I just love this. The other thing that we should keep in mind is that these planetary solar events are happening all at the same time for everyone on the planet. And this in itself is significant. The simultaneity of these events for all who are tuned in. And this probably has great reason why the masters have said that the New World Religion will primarily focus on these approaches through these planetary events full moons, new moons, solstices, equinoxes, and major major touching points like Venus um, touching the Earth. Yes. All right. So let us get comfortable, close our eyes, if you will, and take a deep breath in the stillness of our holy heart and holy mind. And envision ourselves standing 
in circle around the planet, joined by countless thousands and perhaps millions of conscious souls. And let us see ourselves standing in a divine circle of presences. In the center of which stands the Christ. And around him vibrationally standing the masters of love wisdom. Great lights of living love and light and power. These great ones are bringing in the energies of the constellation Capricorn. The light of initiation. And that light that views the way to the heart of the sun on the mountain top. The light that is called the supernal light where the seven lights of the seven rays of the great bear meet. And let a sound and own to come into vibrational resonance with this energy. And as this energy is pointing through Shambhala, that center where the will of God is known, through the spiritual hierarchy and the Christ, where the love of God is known. And where the plan of God is known. through the soul of humanity. Where the mind of God is known. And through us and living substance, the substance of the earth, in the earth plane, in the subtle etheric plane that registers the energy of the highest spheres of light and love and holy will. And as this energy continues to pour through us, Bring, let us bring our awareness to the top of the head, to the crown. And take a deep breath of life. Of Capricorn energy. And in the natural breathing in and out breathing, allow this energy to touch the tenth petal in the heart and the head that corresponds with Capricorn. And this qualified energy flowing through your sacred body
down through you and into the earth. Blessing the earth upon which you walk. Let us be living conduits on this day. This initiatory energy that leads to the mountain top. So beautiful preparing us for Capricorn. Full moon tomorrow. as we participate in the ceremonial rituals of the daily life of Sonnet Kamara, implemented by music and sound and carried on the waves of color, looking upon the shores of the three worlds of human evolution. Cosmic Christ brings the light of the world. To all life on earth. To all resonating channels with this light. Radiant in its glory. Let us enter deep in the stillness. Deep in the silence. Deep in the beauty of the one life. In which we live and move and have our being. Let the stillness reach through all the workers of the world. And bring in the soul of humanity in ever greater measure. Before we sound the great invocation, let us link with the souls who are here gathered today 
and extend a beam of radiant loving light to each other. And let us visualize ourselves once again standing in the sacred circle around the planet. Direct our energy to the stimulation of the love of the soul of humanity and the higher will of humanity to come forth in ever greater measure. Hierarchical ruler of Capricorn is Venus. Linking us with the Venusian Christ. And let us walk the way of the lighted path whence we came. So together in this one, let us sound the great invocation. From the point of light, within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. And let us see that light extending as a great column through the center of the Cardinal Cross. into the earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. Make Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.
so be it, and help us to do our part. So be it. Thank you, everyone. Blessings to you on the sacred hold the field. And tomorrow is the Capricorn full moon. And we continue the ascent in consciousness. And we have set a wonderful tone and beginning for that. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alina. Thank you, Sheldon. Thank you, everyone. And we keep our silent circle holding the focus on the good of all humanity. And we invite you to join our coming webinars of the 2025 initiative. Um, in two days, we will have the second uh, webinar in this uh, full moon, the Solstice Festival webinar with the Planetary Systems Project. We will focus on the energy of Capricorn as we set our intention working in preparation towards the festival week of the new group of world service in the sign of Capricorn in 2019, asserting the new culture and civilization. On December 31st, we invite you to join our annual Capricorn alignment with Jerusalem via the Hekal group, which will be for the second year, a part of the New Year's Eve vigil organized by the Moria Federation. On January 6th, we continue working with the cycle of the new moons, focusing on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. This time we'll focus on goal eight, decent work and economic growth. And our next solar festival webinar under the sign of Aquarius will be on January 19th. And we will bring our focus to the group of scientific uh, workers with Jose Becerra leading us into meditation. Thank you, everyone. And let's stay connected. <laughs>